Hey everybody, welcome to today's episode of the Agency Accelerator podcast. Now today's a little bit different because we are doing a first, which is a customer spotlight. And you're going to see these episodes peppered throughout the rest of this series where I sit down and chew the fat with one of my clients, understanding where they were at, why they engaged with me, some of the challenges that they faced and how they've overcome them and what their goals are for the following year. My hope by doing these episodes is that you can learn from their journey and from some of their experiences, from some of the things that they did well and some of the things that they didn't do so well so that you don't have to make those same mistakes. So this is another action-packed episode and let's go and meet Sam, who is the owner and CEO of Blink SEO. Accelerate your agency's profitable growth with tools, tips and value-added interviews with your host, agency owner and coach, Rob DeCosta. So on today's episode of the Agency Accelerator podcast, we're doing something slightly different and we're going to have, this is the first of our occasional episodes where I'm going to be bringing on one of my private coaching clients to share with you the journey that they've been on, some of the challenges that they've had to overcome, where they're at and where they hope to be in the future. So I'm really excited to have the owner of Blink SEO, Sam Wright, with with me today. And Blink is a digital agency that helps e-commerce businesses grow. Now, Sam, I'm sure you can do a much better introduction than me (laughs) about that. So why don't we just start off by giving a bit of background and, and perhaps the story on why you decided to start your own agency? Sure, absolutely. So just to give you a bit of background, Blink is a team of nine, soon to be 10 uh, specialists. Uh, Well, we are predominantly an e-commerce focused digital agency. We've got a team of nine, soon to be 10, based in a mixture of Norwich, Birmingham and Coventry. So we're pretty much fully dispersed now post lockdown. Um, Typically, we work with e-commerce businesses that are turning over between, say, half a million to to five million. Um, Our typical kind of client is a business that doesn't necessarily have digital marketing resources in-house, and we kind of step in and and fill that gap for them. We've worked with a number of businesses over the years across a kind of wide range of sectors, but e-commerce is our primary interest at the moment. Let's get a bit of insight into why did you start your agency and what were you doing before you started Blink? Yeah, absolutely. So I graduated in 2007 and I'd studied creative writing at university and that was my kind of my entry into uh, into the kind of world of marketing because I my first job was in B2B publishing Um, and part of that role was producing content for online channels, various websites. And through that, I got my introduction into SEO. Um, I worked there for a year before moving on to do an MA in creative writing at the UEA. And at that point, I started freelancing, doing a mixture of content, journalism and SEO work. And I didn't really, really start doing this kind of work with a view to a career path working in an agency or founding an agency. It's just something that's kind of evolved over time. As I was freelancing, it got to the point where I took on an assistant. Then I started working with some agencies as an additional resource and ended up partnering with one for a while. And at that point, which is about five or six years ago, maybe a little bit longer, I had a couple of employees and decided to focus on Blink as the kind of primary interest. And so the whole thing kind of emerged over time. I never thought I want to start an agency. It it just kind of happened. So it, yeah, it's kind of evolved and come to that point. Yeah, and I think that will be a story that many of our listeners are familiar with and can relate to. And certainly, that was a similar story for me when I started my agency. That happenstance meant I was started out freelancing and then got really busy so hired someone and then before you know it you suddenly got a team of people you're responsible for Mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of mouths that you need to feed before your own mouth your own your mouth gets fed um what were your aspirations i know you said it sort of you didn't have those plans but what were your aspirations as you started out what did you ever have that sort of bigger picture of future in mind or you just kind of trying to survive day to day i mean there was definitely 
a chunk of, well, a, a large portion of it was trying to survive hand to mouth for a while, as, as I'm sure lots of people can identify with. I think one of the main reasons for branching out on, by myself as well is back then the opportunities for, for content specific work were quite slight. It was mainly just producing content for like for SEO reasons. There wasn't much strategy involved with a lot of businesses that I was uh, working with. Um, there wasn't much kind of content strategy t- tying into broader business goals. A, a lot of the kind of things that you see businesses pushing for now, a lot of the kind of content marketing stuff that's really interesting that people are doing, that that wasn't happening with a number of businesses, uh, well, a large portion of the businesses that were uh, that were operating back then. So I wanted to kind of take a bit more control of that side of things. Also, I'd say the first company that I worked with in publishing had a really unpleasant work environment. And by going out, I going out by myself, I had a bit more, I had an opportunity to, uh, to kind of mold the environment where I'd like to work. And I think that's something that we've tried to keep on um, yeah. with, with the agency as, as we've grown. Yeah, I think that's another thing that a lot of people will be able to relate to that you know, you've had experiences of how you don't want to do it and they mold you into thinking about, well, I want to be in control of my destiny and my environment and my culture and therefore I'm going to be much more conscious of it than perhaps my employer was when I was working at my previous previous agency. So, so you've grown over the years and then you got to a certain point where you reached out to um, start talking with me and I'm interested to know what were what, what were the biggest challenges that you faced at that point and what was it what was the like the catalyst that said okay I need to reach out to work with a coach like Rob well I think that there's, there's a few things here I'd say that we probably had a lack of direction before we started working with you and a, a kind, maybe a kind of lack of identity around the business as well I think we were probably seen as a small, kind of well-priced, good-natured, decent agency, and that's great. But you know, we've, we've got ambitions to be a, a bit better than a bit better than that. Um, so, so yeah, that that kind of like core direction has been incredibly useful, and that, that's helped us focus a lot more on what we want to achieve and the best ways to go about it. And any other any other challenges that you specifically faced? when when we started working together that you wanted to solve besides that lack of direction or was that the main thing um, well i think that that's that's very important I'm, I'm trying to think back now it seems like so long ago <laughs> but it's actually it's, actually <laughs> so it's been really... about what well, has been about a year or 18 months yeah yeah remember, yeah something like that yeah I'd, I'd say that i'd had a number of business advisors and i think this is probably something again that might be quite a good lesson for other people in the same situation the i had a number of advisors supplied through like council schemes and um like government incentives where they put you with a business mentor but they weren't specialists they were generalists and i found the advice was you know it was generic and you know ultimately not that useful um when, when you've got a kind of business challenge what what you want is some practical advice, not you need to go off and do some SWOT analysis and do it and 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 all of, all of that stuff, which is kind of tend to be where where kind of non specialist advisors give you yeah that's where they start off, and and great you know it's it's good to get that kind of general background sometimes, but but what I found with working with you in particular is you know we we don't have to go through all of those steps to get to what the problem is you know we we can focus on what the what the issue is and the solution in quite a concise way there's no kind of we we, we don't need to get anybody up to speed on 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 how things work which is you know incredibly useful yeah and you mentioned earlier that you one of the catalysts was having a lack of direction what what frustrations did that lead you to have in your agency at the time? How did you feel about that? Well, I think that lack of direction influences quite a lot of the decisions that you make on a, on a day-to-day basis. Um, you know, it could be down from to what kind of people do we need to hire? Um, what kind of projects are we, go, are we going over? How should we be using our time? You know, it, it just means that you're not, your, your decision-making in general becomes less efficient. Yeah. Okay. Good. 
Well, that's very true. I mean, if we don't know where we're headed, then we have no framework to make decisions, do we? Whereas if we've got clarity around that, you know, certainly one of the things that I do with many clients like we've done together is to make sure we've got a kind of a three-year vision and a a detailed one-year plan and then breaking that down into quarters and into um, monthly plans as well. And talk to me because now, Sam, you, you're, you've been part of my private coaching and then you've also mm-hmm. become part of the self-running agency group coaching program. Talk to me about um, some, now I, I should just say for the listeners, I told Sam beforehand that this isn't trying to be a big promotion for me, but I just want to get sort of that honest viewpoint from um, from someone who's been in in this kind of environment what, what are the advantages of being part of like a group coaching program whether it's my program or anyone else's program what would you say the value you're getting from that um, I think the kind of the general sounding board part of it is really is really useful everybody everybody in the group seem is in more or less the same boat and the problems that we're facing are, are kind of are sh- are shared across the group so that's been really useful there's been some kind of like a variety of insight across the various people involved as well so there's a, there's a lot of opinions and a lot of different approaches which is always useful but I, yeah I, I think doing this kind of job is quite isolated in many ways and just knowing that there are other people having the same challenges as you is is quite is quite encouraging in many ways yeah yeah i mean it's lonely at the top in any business isn't it and having people around you who've got your back but have got a you know don't have an agenda about it i think is is super powerful and actually what i really love about the group is how some of it is sort of taking a bit of a life of its own like i know there's an initiative going on at the moment where a Mm -hmm. bunch of you are working on partnerships together outside of stuff that i'm doing which is absolutely fantastic so we're just creating a really good supportive supportive community so tell me about goals for blink in 2021 where what what are your aspirations for this year well i think we've had such a good year in many ways like even with the lockdown the coronavirus and all of those things we've managed to pretty much double the size of the business now and the team is growing and i think we can we can see that there's a huge appetite for, for what we do so, I, I mean, I, I guess the goals for the coming year really are to to grow the business probably by another fifty to one hundred percent, and I think that's entirely entirely reasonable. But what we want to do now is to really focus on cementing our kind of high level expertise and become a real a real leader in our space. And I think that's that's you know rather than setting kind of revenue goals, I think that's where that's more of the target that we want to achieve yeah and we're seeing some good signs that we're on that path already yeah and what just just share with us some of the sort of growing pains that a business that's growing 100 percent year on year goes through i'd say structurally um like team organization is quite a is quite a difficult one um we're in that gap now of where most of our team are kind of have hybrid roles but and it's a case of do we bring people in as sole specialists without that hybrid, um, that those kind of hybrid responsibilities? You know, when you've got a team of forty or fifty, it's much easier to have very, very clear demarcation on roles. But you know, for a business of like 10, 15 people, then you really need a degree of fluidity uh, between everything. Otherwise, it's just not it's just not practical. And, you know, small businesses, people need to jump on things and move around and, you know, be flexible. We're, we're kind of having to, with our next hires, look at people that are specialists, but also a bit generalist and, you know, try and strike that balance. So, and I think also one of the things that we're finding at the moment is hiring is, is a lot, very long process at the moment. And the people that we're typically dealing with have two, three month notice periods Um, it takes a month or so to find them. So realistically, we're trying to predict what the business is going to look like in three, four months, you know, um, before, before we're hiring people. So we're kind of looking for people that are going to help us achieve that next stage of growth before we've got the business through the door. Um, but, um, but we know if we don't have them in, you know, and when it does come in and we haven't got them there, we're not going to be able to fulfill it. So it yeah so kind of looking that far ahead regarding hires is a bit of a challenge, um, but 
I, yeah, I don't think sure. there's any other way to do it. You've just got to have confidence that uh, things are going in the right direction and um, yeah, and, and move towards it. Yeah, well, you, you've certainly done well in a very challenging environment to have grown 100% year on year. What would you, if you had to put your successes in like three things, what, what do you put your success of that kind of rapid growth down to? Um, I think it's focusing on clients that are, are best fit and understanding kind of what what their pain points are and focusing on solving those. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, we're, we're lucky in that the e-commerce space is growing so so quickly and there's an enormous uh, appetite for, for the kind of work that we do out there. Um, I think, yeah, I'd, other than that, We've got some great long-term clients that, that we've worked with for a long time, and, and we we do quite well out of referrals as well. And what what we're just trying to push throughout the team is this culture of um, quality and um, an effective communication, and that seems to be serving us quite well at the moment. Yeah. So a few things just from the viewer's perspective that I think Sam and Blink do really well. So first of all, they have this really clear niche of working in e-commerce with a really clear product proposition um they are really clear because of that of who their ideal target customer is and therefore you know i know this has changed over the last sort of 18 months but your pricing is kind of now aligned to that marketplace and that makes it easier to do more profitable work right yeah absolutely absolutely and i think we're kind of in a, in a good space in that it's actually cheaper for for a business like an e-commerce business turning over one to two million um, to hire us than it would be to hire internally, and we we can do a better job than than um, than someone that would be on a 25, 30 k salary. So it yeah. like as a kind of value proposition to the client, it it, it does make sense, um, and and that's kind of yeah, that's one of the ways that that's one of the reasons that we're seeing such such strong growth. And can you just talk us a little bit about your business development journey like what are the things that you've tried that have failed and tried that have worked that have got you this 100 percent year on year growth okay because you have to be doing um, something right now to make that happen yeah yeah absolutely absolutely basically we've done what you told us <laughs> as, as i'm sure you'll be pleased to hear and i'll um, pay you i'll pay you for saying that yeah, later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're kind of initially our, our business development was pretty much based on on referrals, uh, we we have experimented with outbound sales as well, but pretty much we're just focused now on inbound marketing uh, through building email lists, um, some LinkedIn activity, um, kind of content marketing side side of things, and it's yeah, and that's working well. Um, I know we've spoken before, Rob, where I was quite. Um, insistent that we should try the outbound sales route, and we've we've been a, you know a few months in now, and it's you know it's not as effective as inbound, and that's you know that's that's pretty um, that's that's pretty clear. I think one of the one, um, we've hired a, a a marketing manager now that just solely works on the business uh, or on us as a brand, Fantastic. Um, which is which is great because it's freed up probably you know 20 30 percent of my time to do other stuff which is great um what, what i'm pleased about with that is we've only been doing it a couple of months and we're seeing the results already um which is great and because these things are typically a slow burn i was expecting not to see any results for six to 12 months that's been been really interesting about how quick it can happen um obviously that's not going to be the case for everybody but it is, it's been really interesting for us. Yeah, I think, you know, I know Sam and I have had this conversation many times and I've had it with a number of clients over time that we always would like to find that magic solution to new business. And sometimes there are people or organizations out there that appear to offer you that magic bullet. But sadly, when it seems to be too good to, true, to be true, it often is. And that actually, you know, doing the right amount of things doing them consistently will deliver you results. And that's something that I've spoken about many times on this podcast and spoken about many times with my clients and in the, in the coaching group. And, you know, Blink is a really good example of putting this into practice and actually, um, you know, getting the results 
as a result of it, which is fantastic. And investing that money in a marketing person is a great, you know, is a great thing to do and give you more consistent results over time as well. Absolutely. I mean, one thing just to add in there, we've done quite a lot of work on identifying the places where our target audience can commune online, you know, whether it's Facebook communities or, or Slack groups or, or Twitter or, or wherever these kind of audiences uh, um, gather. Yeah. And I know this, this is kind of just standard good marketing advice, isn't it? You know, find out where your audience are and put the right message in front of them. But I think, you know, once you do have that tightly defined audience and a, and a kind of reasonably strong proposition, then all of this stuff does become a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it sounds obvious when you say it out loud, but it isn't yes. obvious to a lot of people. <laughs> and it's stuff that people just don't do. So, you know, it's always good to, you know, say these things out loud. Again, I always tell, you know, my the group and my clients that uh, nothing I teach is new. Um, it's not like I'm a rocket scientist that's coming up with some fantastic new thing. It's just that sometimes you hold a mirror up to people and say, look, guys, this is what you need to do. And this is what you need to focus on. And you need to take work through steps one two and three to get to get the results and there's no fast track way of doing it so you know i think it's good to hear that again what's what's the future for blink what's your longer term aspirations if we were if you and i were having a glass of champagne in a in five years time <laughs> catching up what what would you be telling me about blink okay if champagne still exists in five years time <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there'll probably be some english version yeah is, is that something people can do in five years and um, i hope so I, i'd say that, that we don't have an ambition to grow in terms of like vast numbers in terms of head count and i haven't got ambitions to you know be turning over 100 million or or, or anything like that um it i think we we just want to be as good as we can be in terms of expertise um, and be seen as that kind of that industry leader within our our kind of specific niche i think that's you know that's our kind of our longer term ambition yes and so my so my book and also my coaching program is called the self running agency so how close do you think you will be in 5 years time to having a more autonomous agency that's less dependent on you perhaps as it is now well, I, I don't think I'm a million miles away from that at the moment. It's certainly a lot closer than when we first started working together. I think, you know, that's entirely Fantastic. achievable. I'm also, well, I'm about to have a kind of an initial test on that because my um, I've got a child due in, in June, which is a good opportunity to see how the business is running without me. Can I just say one of the things I love about the group is that Sam posted a question. I hope you don't mind me saying this, Sam, but no, Sam posted a question about... You know, did anybody in the group have any advice about his impending fatherhood and got some fantastic advice back from people, right? Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd like to say that I wasn't having an existential crisis about, uh, <laughs> about parenting. Oh, no, it, no, 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 of course. <laughs> um, it was more to do with the kind of... Pragmatic advice, I think. Yes, yes. Pra practical advice about people that have, you know, traditionally worked long hours running a business and then uh, and then have kind of gone through the same thing. And, and the advice was, was brilliant. Yeah. Well, there's nothing like that being um thrust upon you to make you get some balance in your life and yeah exactly. certainly focus on building a self-running agency so my last question sam which is the question that i ask all of my guests on the podcast um is that if you go back in time and for you it's not that many years but for me it would be a lot of years if you go back in time and advise your younger self just starting out in business and could give him one piece of advice what would that be um i'd probably say to find some uh, some people that you admire, some mentors that you look up to and follow them. Um, I think that's something I kind of really lacked early on in my career. Um, and typically, you know, I've, I've done most of this stuff by myself without someone else involved. And I think I could have learned a lot more, a lot quicker if there were people around with that kind of, that kind of expertise, you know, and, Looking back, if I'd have gone and sought that out, I think, um, you know, I think I would have seen some quite big improvements quite quickly. I, I, I imagine this is something that, that lots of other people would, would say as well. Do you know what? I don't know. 
don't don't quote me on this, but I don't think anyone has actually said that before in in sixty odd episodes of the podcast. So I'll have mm-hmm. asked this question thirty times, and at one point I'm going to collate all the responses together. But I don't know that anybody's actually said that. Okay. So that is a good. Okay. That is actually a really smart bit of advice. And interesting enough, when we're young and arrogant, that might be the last thing that we're actually prepared to do when we're in our early 20s starting out because we think we know it all and we can conquer the world. Um, but actually, it's a re- that is a really smart piece of advice that you know I think we could all wish we had some mentors and some people that you know would have been great role models for us and helped us not just learn by the mistakes that we made by learn, but learn by role modeling, great behavior and great decisions as well. Yeah, it, it, exactly. It's one thing from learning from what you, you don't want to do from people doing things badly, but learning from people doing things well is a completely different um, kettle of fish, I think. Yeah. Fantastic. So we will put your uh, link to your website and your uh, LinkedIn um, address in as well. Is there any other connection points if people want to get hold of you as the best ways to find you yeah i think i think that's about it great okay well listen i really appreciate your time today and uh, all the best with is it do you know if it's a boy or a girl <laughs> is that something it, it, yeah, we do it's a girl i'm very excited okay well good luck with the birth of your daughter thank you so a big thank you to Sam for taking the time out to join us on the Agency Accelerator podcast today. I'm sure you'll be able to relate to many of the ups and downs of Sam's journey as he's grown his digital agency. As I said at the beginning, we'll be having more episodes like this in the future. So please make sure you have hit the subscribe button. Please share this episode with your colleagues. And if you're enjoying it, please consider leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. But other than that, have a fantastic Thursday, Friday, brilliant weekend. And I will be back with you next week for the next episode of the Agency Accelerator podcast.